This is Dumb Down Life number 47. If you own a home that is mobile and 14 cars that aren't, you might be a redneck. If directions to your house include turn off the paved road, you might be a redneck. The first song there was from The Break and Repair Method, and it was called This City. Now, as you'll be aware, Lance has been over with Doug in North Carolina for the past, well, almost two weeks now. And uh, I finally managed to catch up with them yesterday and get a little background on um, what they've been doing. There we go, then. Good, 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 good. So Lance and I both decided we have absolutely nothing to talk about. <laughs> we have no topics, nothing in particular. Lance said, oh, it's okay. We're just going to sit down and have a chat. <laughs> well, you've got plenty to talk about. I mean, where the bloody hell have you been all this week? <laughs> oh, Lance could talk about that. I've been there before. It's all boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's your first trip out to the US. Um, you know, any horror stories with the flight or, you know, um, Not really, no. The flight was absolutely fine. Um, yeah. I was in an aisle seat, so I didn't get much of a view. Um, watched a crap film. Um, Which was? Speed Racer. 
Uh-huh. Don't watch it. Whatever you do, do not watch it. It was appalling. Um, okay, I'll cancel the bit torrent on that one now then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it was about a nine hour flight and then it took me another hour and a half to get through uh, Homeland Security once I got here. Yeah. And the worst thing is as well, Bob and I, um, this is the first time we've been back to IDU since they built the new terminal. Um, <laughs> it's, it's very nice. I mean, it's fabulous. Um, but we went upstairs and there's a, you've got the check-in bit and then there's a bit next to it that says waiting area. So naturally you assume that's the waiting area for waiting for incoming flights. So we sat there for, God, we must have sat there for a good hour. And we get a bit fed up thinking, well, where's Lance, man? His plane landed ages ago. And uh, then this lady came out from the check-in bit and said, if you're waiting for the flight from London, that's downstairs. So basically they spent $10 billion on a brand new terminal and they couldn't afford 10 bucks for a sign to say international flights coming downstairs. <laughs> were you sat in this terminal by yourself by any chance? No, actually that's the point. There were lots of other people waiting as well who didn't fucking realise. <laughs> so what prompted this woman to come out and talk to you then? Do you know, I have no idea. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> it could possibly have been the group of English people stood upstairs cussing and swearing about how fucking long customs were taken. <laughs> Either that or there was no more internal flights and she's sitting there thinking, why the hell are these people still sitting? Oh, I wonder if they're supposed to be waiting downstairs. <laughs> so were you wandering around like a lost weekend downstairs looking for them, were you? No, I was still in Homeland Security. They were downstairs waiting for me by the time I got out. Right. Um, I mean, I don't know how many people this plane holds, but... Um, what is it, about 200? No, it's about 350, I think, in total. They had two guys on um, oh. check on the Homeland Security. Yeah. So it took us, like I say, it was a nine-hour flight and then an hour and a half just to get another half a mile through the bloody airport. Yep. <laughs> yep. And the worst thing is, I mean, I've got a short attention span at the best of times and I was starting to get bored waiting for Lance and looking for things to get in mischief to. <laughs> <laughs> The worst thing is this downstairs area, it looks like, if you imagine your worst sort of Kubrick, uh, Kubrick-esque kind of uh, governmental white plastic waiting room kind of thing, that's exactly what it was like. It's just so, it's so bland and almost medical, you know? So I can just imagine them for the, um, for the biometrics test, they got these things that open your eyelids and, and <laughs> <laughs> the little, the little um, Logitech camera is thrust at your eyeball. <laughs> Unfortunately, unlike um, Clockwork Orange, there was no porn to watch. <laughs> <laughs> did you have to have a biometrics when you come in, Lance? I wouldn't imagine so. They did a retina scan. Uh, oh. uh, no, not a retina scan. They did take a photo of my face. I had to look directly into these two lenses. In that case, that's a biometric. Did you do the whole fingerprint scan? Yeah, I did that as well. Yeah, that's biometric. I, I uh, had to go for my biometrics recently for uh, my visa. And uh, that's done at a, a different area. It's not done at the airport. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you meant different area, like they, you know, put something out your bum or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, that Mr. kind of different area. <laughs> um, but they don't have any fancy equipment. It's just a camera and a fingerprint scanner. But what they do have is cute 18-year-old girls who take your hand very gently and go, my God, you've got cold hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me warn you. <laughs> uh, do you know, I thought about all those different cliches and then thought, you know what, I'm here because... I'm supposed to be proving that I'm happily married. Let's not try flirting with a girl who's <laughs> testing me. <laughs> She's probably heard it a million times anyway. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, not as charmingly as me, though. <laughs> You're listening to Dumbed Down Life. First day we were here, we didn't really do a lot, did we? Uh, no, we didn't. We, um, we, we relaxed with a uh, cup of coffee and uh, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> a cup of stuff, yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, no, we didn't do much on the first night because obviously Lance just done a nine-hour flight. He's done a three-hour drive or whatever. Although I think you actually stayed overnight in Darren's, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so that's not too bad. Uh, so yeah, no, we didn't do a lot. We just chilled out, relaxed, fed him chili, and then he passed out. Pretty much, yeah. It's all a bit of a blur to be. Oh no, um, I got here on the Saturday. We did pretty much nothing Sunday, didn't we? We went shopping, but went shopping Sunday. And then Monday, Bobby had to go to work, so Doug and I went fishing. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right, we went fishing. I introduced Lance to the pleasures of dangling your rod in a cold pond. <laughs> Fiddle, fiddling with your worm. 
<laughs> oh man, you, I, I, I got to tell you, <laughs> you, you should see this guy with a worm. Right, he won't touch it with his hands. He's try. He picks it up with a pair of pliers, cuts it in half, and then tries to put it on the hook with a pair of pliers. I was doing all right get, by the end of it. He doesn't want to get worm juice on his fingers. Eyes <laughs> <laughs> black and shitty and horrible. And pretty gross, actually. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. But you kind of get used to worm poo. You just wipe it down your jeans, you know. Yeah, but I had brand new jeans on that I bought from Target, so I wasn't doing. In that it's Tajay Lance. Tajay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. Not heard that one before. Um, but I did catch a fish within about three minutes of dangling my rod, didn't I? Yes, you did. Yeah, yeah. And then caught nothing else for the entire day. Um, the fish was what about six inches long at the most. Yeah, it was a it was a crappy. Um, now that isn't that isn't a mark yeah. on. Lance's fish capping, catching capabilities, so that's actually a kind of fish. Uh, and they're not especially big, and I think this time of year as well, probably most of the fish in there are juvenile, because I caught, a, I caught a, a spotted catfish, which was kind of small as well. Uh, so, we hang on a second, is it, is it spotted because it's juvenile, like going through an acne phase? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, actually, I don't think so. I think, the, the, I think the, you get channel catfish and spotted catfish, and I think they're spotted, stay spotted their whole life, but I'm not entirely sure on that. But we do have photos to prove it. Was this the first time you've been fishing then, Lance? First time in about, um, Christ, I was about 11 the last time I went, so about 24 years. Yeah, and I was, I was really worried as well, because he'd said that when he'd gone fishing back then, it was piss boring and he hated it. <laughs> it's the most yeah. boring thing in the bloody world, but I really enjoyed it. I must be getting old. <laughs> 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 to be fair, the, the very first time, the one and only time I went fishing, um, I did get a fish hook in my elbow while my brother-in-law was casting. Ouch kind of puts you off you know uh, and then we just sort of sat there and watched them throw rods into the water and not catch much and well if they're throwing their rods in the water they're not going to catch much. <laughs> i thought but the yeah. typical way of doing fishing out in the states was to take a boat out into the middle of the lake throw a bit of dynamite in and then as all the fish come to the surface you just net them up uh redneck fishing yeah <laughs> <laughs> No, I haven't had the pleasure of redneck fishing yet. Unfortunately, I use traditional methods.
On Tuesday, when it was the elections, um, I thought, right, well, I'll just stay up until um, the the whole you know, thing's decided, um, or until North Carolina or um, Missouri announce what they are, because then I'll have something to talk about. And um, eventually, once the whole thing had been won, neither Missouri nor North Carolina had actually announced what their winnings were, because it took a couple of days later before they even said anything. Yeah, I know, and we we don't. I mean, that's actually what we did Tuesday. We pretty much sat and watched the elections. Yeah, um, and I have no idea why North Carolina took so long to uh, to come in. But well, it, it wasn't did. until we were in the mountains. I happened to flick on the telly, and it came up with uh, the declaration for North uh, North Carolina, and Obama won by just sixteen thousand votes over the whole state. Yeah, which yeah. is uh, um, which is quite an achievement, really, because North Carolina is traditionally a, a Republican state, uh, you know. Um, so it was a uh, quite monumental for, for not only for Obama to win the presidency, of course, but for him to win North Carolina as well. Um, and that's something else you did on Tuesday. What? With Bobby, we went to vote. Oh yeah, we went to vote. We went down to the polling office to watch Bobby vote. I was going to say, they didn't let you vote. <laughs> that would be cheating. <laughs> no, we went and watched Bobby vote, and I have a little sticker in my wallet that said, I voted. <laughs> but you didn't have <laughs> voted. And the, the one thing we can say for the American voting system is that where we went, it smelled of wet dog. <laughs> yeah. It was a church, wasn't it? Yeah. And they always say you shouldn't mix religion and politics. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> If you've ever cut your grass and found a car, you might be a redneck. Honestly, we've been getting up late, not doing an awful lot. It's just been very much of a chill out up until we went to the mountains on Wednesday. Yeah, and then it all went crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we went to the Blue Smoky Mountains. That's correct, yes. Yep. Uh, in a, what, what was the name of the town we went to? Is it Cherokee? Yeah, we went to Cherokee and uh, Maggie Valley, in, uh, which is in the Appalachian Mountain Range in North Carolina. Um, and the area we're in is called the Blue Smoky Mountains. It's actually um, an Indian reserve, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, so we went up, we drove down to there, that was pretty much all of Wednesday. And then we went to um, the casino, where I lost quite a bit of money. <laughs> <laughs> As yeah, as you'd expect. Yeah. You didn't do too well that night either, did you? Uh, no, no, I, I spent every penny I had, frankly. <laughs> um, and then Thursday, we... Christ, what did we do? It's all a bit of a blur. <laughs> yes, yeah, because... I mean, I think a lot of the reason it's a blur is because, obviously, you'll know, Darren, this is a big-ass country. Um, and pretty much everywhere you go takes you, like, three and a half days to friggin' drive there. <laughs> um, so, I mean, after the, the five-hour drive on uh, Wednesday, I think we were all a bit wiped, and then the rest of the week was just like, ah. Yep. So was the, the first day we were there, is that the day we went to um, the Tennessee border? No. We did that on the way home 
same day as we did Grandfather Mountain. Oh, no, 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 that's right. The Wednesday, Thursday, sorry, that's when we went to the Tennessee border and um, Clingman's Dome. That's it. Um, just Yeah, we went to the, the border, um, looked out over the Tennessee side of the Appalachians and the Smoky Mountains, and then went down to um, Clingman's Dome, which is half up this hill, and somebody had built a, basically an observation platform. Mm. Um, which sounds nice and simple and, and easy, but God, it wasn't easy to get to, was it? <laughs> As you come out of the car park, there's a sign that says Clingman Stone, 0.5 miles. We all decided that that was complete horseshit, and what they actually meant was it would take you 0.5 lifetimes to walk up to Clingman <laughs> <laughs> because it's, I mean, it, it's almost vertical, Darren. It, it, there's a pathway, <laughs> but it's almost vertical. And, I mean, we must have stopped like six times. <laughs> <laughs> sort of uh, interspersed on the, the pathway up there, there's these rest um, stops with wooden seats. I think we stopped on every single one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll confess, I nearly gave up halfway up. I've not been to Clingmanstone before. We've been to the Tennessee border quite a few times with you know various people that have been over. Um, but we'd never gone to Clingmanstone before, so it was a new thing for me as well. And I, we got almost to the top. I sat down on the bench and I said, you know what, guys? I can't go any further. I, I just I couldn't breathe. I swear to you, I couldn't breathe. Now, that's, of course, smoking. I smoke two packs a day, so I'm not surprised my lungs have you know, given up and looking for employment elsewhere. Elsewhere. But um, yeah, I almost never made it to the top. But thankfully, Lance and Bobby convinced me to carry on, and we did. And we do have video evidence of that as well, don't we? Yeah, excellent. <laughs> Sitting there saying, So where are we? I'm in hell. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I will say this much, as much as it killed me, coming down was very nice, but going up nearly killed me, but it was definitely worth it. It really was worth the effort to get up there. The the view you can see for, I mean, God knows how many miles you could see for, and it's nothing but mountains, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and we got to see the sunset while we were at the top, didn't we? Yeah, we timed it perfectly. I mean, not deliberately, it was pure accident, but we timed it to the point where we were up at Clingman Stone for a little while, and then as we started heading down, the sun started setting, so we got to watch the sun go down over the mountains, which was just amazing. So you got there early morning, but by the time you'd got to the top, <laughs> it, was, it was sunset, was it? Hang on, were you there with us? <laughs> um, and then we went back to the casino, where I proceeded to lose more money. But, <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, but Doug and Bobby had quite a bit of luck, didn't you? Oh, yeah, we did. We were, we were playing this game called uh, Deuces Wild. Um, and basically, the way it works is you get your standard poker hands, but deuces are, as the name suggests, wild, so they can apply to any card. Um, and you get, it's 25 cents a go, um, but I was doing it where you... Uh, put in five points so it's like a dollar 25 per go and uh, I put my twenty dollars in and I'm banging away and I, I did quite well actually it, it, I mean the lowest pay is uh, three of a kind and you kind of get that regularly so um, and then I managed to hit four deuces and if you hit four deuces you get I think it's a uh, hundred and fifty times your uh, buy-in or something it's like a thousand that. points <laughs> Was it? Yeah, a thousand points. Which basically meant for my twenty dollars I won two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, nice. So nice. Bobby being the ever sensible one said, Well honey, why don't you get up, go cash your ticket in and we'll put that two hundred dollars in the wallet and then you can carry on gambling. So I'm like, Fantastic, okay, yeah, that's a good idea. So I'm all excited and you know, got the old rush and stuff. Stood up and apparently not two seconds after I walked off, Bobby hit exactly the same thing and she also won two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so basically, those two wins completely paid for our trip to the mountain. They paid for the hotel, the meal we paid for, and the two nights gambling. Oh, nice. Nice. And I lost loads. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Didn't win a thing all night. <laughs> um, so that was Wednesday and Thursday, wasn't it? Friday, In the mountains, yes. Yep. Friday we came back, but we came back via Grandfather Mountain, which is the tallest peak in the area, is it? Uh, no. No, it's not. <clears throat> Oh, no, it's not, because no. we looked out on the mountain. Of yeah, I can't, Mitchell Peak, I think, That's is it. the tallest peak in the mountain. But what, what it is, there's a, a gap, and they've strung this metal bridge, suspension bridge, across the gap, and it's called Mile High Bridge, because you're a mile high, and God, you know it when you walk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and that was quite uh, pretty amazing, actually, just to sort of stand there and look out and look down 
there's sod all beneath you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the drive up there is pretty intense as well. Actually, um, there's one of the you go up a series of sharp S bends and high climbs to get up to uh, the top of Grandfather Mountain, and one of them's actually called uh, Forest Gump Curve because they film part of a uh, Forest Gump on there. <laughs> um, uh, there's one scene where you can see him running up a slope with mountains behind him, and that, that's uh, Grandfather Mountain in North Carolina. Um, but it is it is pretty amazing, and Bobby and I, uh, big chicken shits, and going up these slopes is pretty intimidating because you're right on the edge, and you look down, and there's just <laughs> it's just a fucking drop yep. into nowhere down beside yep. you, and it didn't seem to bother Lance, but it bothered me. <laughs> well, no, all I could say when Bobby asked me if I'm worried, I said, no, I'm not worried, because... Um, well, there's sod all I can do about it, and B, I trust Doug's driving, which is probably a mistake on my part. <laughs> <laughs> Doug likes his corners. Oh, uh, yeah, damn right. I mean, I'm, I'm English, so I'm used to corners, of course. <laughs> Come over here, and Americans are scared of corners. So you drive through the mountains, and it's nothing but twisty, windy roads, and they're just so much fun to drive, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Although it does scare the shit out of my wife, which is why I call her chicken, of course, but there you go. Hi, this is Miranda Vetris, and I hope you enjoy this new track. Mm, that doesn't. That sounds awkward. Wake up, fix my hair, write a song, and say a prayer for you. You don't deserve it, and you know it's true. And by your look, I know you. Your book of lies And without them You can't survive long can you last this way being a fake you built up all these strong big walls to keep reality out i tried to help you all i can but now i watch you fall don't care at all you think it's cool to ruin lies well i burned up your book of lies and without Find me online at www.mirandavetris.com or myspace.com slash mirandavetris. Go now. 
Yeah, then we, we finally rolled back, didn't we, Sunday afternoon, all of us completely dead and fucked, and I just passed out on the sofa. <laughs> yeah, you did, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yesterday we were just glad to be home and not have to drive anywhere, so we did nothing. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We scrambled last night, didn't we? That was about the most energetic we got all day. Yeah. <laughs> so you missed uh, True Blood then, did you? No, no, we watched True Blood okay. Sunday night. I got back in time for that. Um, in fact, I have a present to show you when I get back. Ooh. Yeah, no, no, that's a present for him, not for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a present for me. But I have it's a, it's a bottle of True Blood, isn't it? Or an empty bottle. What, which it was. That'd be really cool. I don't know, that'd be a bit gross if you actually consider what True Blood is. Ah, keep it in the fridge. Well, get no, the for, the, for, promotion, for promoting the, um, the, the programme before it came out, they were sending out little vials of True Blood in the post. Um, but it was just some kind of sweet um, red liquid that they were claiming was blood. Oh, I didn't know about that. Well, that kind of poopy is your present then, Lance. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> what's, <laughs> God, what's Lance's present then? Go on. A t-shirt with true blood all over it. Oh, excellent. And oh. a true blood mouse mat. And a true blood bag. And a true blood bag to hold the t-shirt and the mouse mat. Because, of course, you see, m- my wife works for Time Warner Cable and Time Warner oh, Cable and HBO, oh, okay. so they get all the promo stuff in. Uh, she's trying to get him a poster as well at the moment, so we're, we're going to see how that one goes. Which would be really cool. <coughs> um, yeah, so that brings us up to yesterday, and uh, yeah, it was a lazy day yesterday, wasn't it? Yes, a very lazy day. But uh, it's not tomorrow, is it? It's day after Thursday. What? We're going to the beach. Yes, we are. That's right. Thursday, we, we're off down to the beach because Randy and Connie have a place down at the beach, uh, which, excuse me, good Lord, I must stop drinking Coca-Cola. Um, they have a place down at the beach, and of course, we get to use it whenever we please. So uh, we're going to take Glance down to the beach, and uh, hopefully the plan is we're going to go see the USS North Carolina in Wilmington. Uh, we may get up to Kill Devil Hills and go see the Wright Brothers Museum. Uh, and other than that, we're planning on doing a bit of pier fishing. See if we can't catch us a shark or a whale or something. And this this beach is what actually on the um, I always get this wrong Pacific or is it on a lake or no? It's on the Atlantic. Atlantic. I know I'd get it wrong way around. It's, <laughs> it's the East Coast, mate. That'd be a long damn drive. If we were <laughs> I don't know why it just takes me so. I, I always get confused between Pacific and Atlantic. Never mind. Um, so it's actually a. A, a beach on the Atlantic rather than on any other lakes anywhere. Yeah, yeah, it's actually on the ocean. It's uh, it's a place called Surf City, uh, which is a little way down from the Outer Banks. Um, so it's uh, it's proper coastal. It's not you know we're not just taking him to a lake and trying to convince him that it's the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a falling out, I can just start swimming. <laughs> you do know they have sharks off the coast of North Carolina. You tigers and bull sharks and hammerheads and yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm pear fishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that pretty much sums up the 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 trip. Found out the other day that um, local to where uh, I'm going to be living out in Missouri, they actually have tarantulas in the wild. I'm starting to reconsider the whole idea of moving out to the States. <laughs> yeah, I think I would actually. I mean, thankfully, the poisonous spiders we get here aren't very big. Thankfully? Yeah, I mean, God, can you imagine it being poisonous and big? Oh, I guess big's probably better if it's going to be poisonous, because you want to see it and go, right, I'm going to walk around that. You don't want one of these little funnel web jobbies that, um, oh, look at that cute little tiny thing. Accidentally put your hand on it and end up with you know, some poisonous bite. No. <laughs> Darren, there's not a point in my life at which I would look at a spider and go, oh, look at that <laughs> <cute>. <laughs> Bobby's desperately been trying to introduce Lance to Americana, as she calls it, everything American. <laughs> I have a cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently it suits me. It really does, Darren. Uh, we bought it in Cherokee, so it's, you know, it's a... Uh, well, I guess technically, because we bought it in Cherokee, it'd be an Indian it's hat. An Indian. <laughs> <laughs> it's an Indian cowboy hat. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it does. It, it really suits him. As soon as he put it on, I'm like, Lance, man, you've got to buy that. <laughs> so I did. So if you can find me a, a, a baseball cap that's relative to the uh, um, relevant to the area, oh, yeah, easily. No yeah, we'll we, get, we can go back to Tajay and get that. Can't yeah, we? we can. We'll get your Duke hat, yeah, the Blue Devils good. hat, which is the local football team, is it? Uh, well, it's actually the local sports team. Full stop. <laughs> Although it's not the local sports team because there's uh, UNC as well. 
Um, but it's uh, one of them. Um, right. There's basically there's Blue Devils and then there's uh, UNC, and they're two big rivals. And you're either a Blue Devils fan or you're a UNC fan. And if I bought you a UNC hat, I think my nephew would beat me up. Oh, is this um, the 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 Dukes are the blue ones and the UNC are the red guys? Um, no, I think UNC is. No, there was State. Weren't yeah, they? that's um, NC State. Yeah, because I know when we went to Randy and Connie's. Um, the nephew, no, the, one of the sons is a Duke fan, isn't they? And the other guy, Wesley, who is he? He's a NC State fan, yeah. Yeah. And poor old Jacob, my nephew, um, they they paid for the tickets. And, of course, they're NC State fans. So he, uh, Jacob, who is a Duke fan and was dressed up in Duke garb, had to sit in the NC State side. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to hold his tongue. <laughs> yeah, but then again, I mean, this kid is like 16 and 6 foot 4, so there's not many guys going to mess with him, so he was all right. <laughs> so, um, Lance, what was your um, views on your first ever visit to Target then? It's big and cheap. <laughs> big and cheap, and it's like, uh, I think we've, we've mentioned this before, it's got sort of guns at one end and ice cream at the other, isn't it? Well, Target didn't, but Walmart did. Yeah, yeah, I think you're thinking of Walmart, Darren. Target's a regular supermarket. Um, But Walmart, yeah, that's an experience. Um, I I said to Doug, we need to synchronise watches and have a GPS unit in case we get split up. (laughs) It's huge. I tell you, just thinking about you talking about big and cheap, that sounds like a $10 fat hooker. (laughs) (laughs) Which you haven't introduced me to any yet. (laughs) You're right. (laughs) But, yeah, no, Walmart's a bit of a, an experience, to be honest, yeah. Um, we've been in there a couple of times now. We went yep. to get the fish bait. Mm-hmm. Um, Ooh-ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> That's shark bait. Oh, uh, it's close enough. Shark bait. Ooh-ha. Um, yeah, it's it's um, pretty amazing. You can pretty much get anything you want from there. Yeah, although, oddly enough, I didn't find any shotguns. Now, I know they do sell shotguns there, because when I first come here, they had them all out in racks and stuff, but I'm, I'm guessing they put them away somewhere now, and you have to ask for them. I don't know, but they weren't out on display. So. We saw the shells, didn't we? The <laughs> yep. shells were there. Yep. Um, well, it's normally all like the fishing stuff and the sports, uh, the, the yeah, the um, shooting and everything's all together, isn't it, normally? That's normally. where the shells were, but the guns weren't. So, like Doug says, I guess you have to ask for them. They're locked away somewhere now. Either that or they are they are currently moving shit around all over the place there, so maybe they were just in the middle of doing that and they weren't there when we went there, but I don't know. Yeah. And um are you always riding in front in the uh in the, in the passenger seat out there, Lance? No, I'm in gem well, when Bobby's not around I'm in the back. No I'm not. When Bobby's not around I'm in the front. Um and when Bobby is around then I'm in the back. A whole experience of sitting on the right-hand side of the car without the steering wheel in front of you. There's first time I did it. That was that was coming back from the airport, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, and that was really confusing. wrong. Yeah, <laughs> really confusing. Um, and a couple of times, Doug's gone round a roundabout the wrong way because where you've got roundabouts up there, not in the on the actual sort of roads, but where Doug lives, um, entering into the complex, there is a roundabout, and he keeps going round it the wrong way round. Which is very confusing. Not that it would make any difference which way I went round, because Americans have absolutely no, no idea. No. Uh, and the whole turning right thing, if your um, traffic lights are on red, you can go through them if you're turning right and the, the other lanes are clear. Yep. That's odd, but works really well. Yep. I think it's actually quite a good idea. It is, yeah. It's a great idea. Anything else that's um, struck you as, as weird out there? Well, everything, I guess. But there are a few things, but... And I've mentioned them when I've been around, but I can't think of any off the top of my head. <laughs> what have I ever said that's strange? Uh, the shape of the milk bottles you commented on oh, last yeah. night. <laughs> they're, they're weird shapes. You know how ours the are quart, like... Quart bottles. Yeah. Yeah, they're, big they're, square, quarter of a gallon. With a big chunk cut out of it on one corner. Yeah. Where our handles are down the side. I know it sounds like a really insignificant difference, but it does seem really, really odd. Um, what, what else was there? Mentioned a few things, haven't I? I don't know, mate. I've been here nearly three years now, and eh? it's all normal to me. <laughs> oh, the TV, man. That really is getting on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> the yep. amount of adverts, it's just ridiculous. Yep. yep. The, the, sort of, the, the, whatever show you're watching, they'll say about three words, and then it'll come on to an advert. Yep. yep. And the adverts themselves are strange, especially the ones for drugs. 
<laughs> where <laughs> most of the advert is just telling you about what the side effects of the drugs are. Yeah, it's absolutely. a wonder that anybody ever sells anything. Yeah, ever so weird. I think the weirdest one over here is there's a there's a drug for asthma. I can't remember what it's called now, and I probably shouldn't mention it because it's a brand name and we might get sued. <laughs> um, but there's a there's a drug for asthma, and uh, the side effects they list. One of the main serious side effects they list is a risk of asthma related death. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, I mean it's <laughs> surely it shouldn't kill you with asthma. <laughs> yeah, that's odd. Um. I oh, know there's some few, quite a few things that I said that are strange, but I just can't think of what they are. Well, all right. Other than strange, what do you like about being over here? How open everything is. It's all really yeah. well spaced out. Yep. Um, yeah. The closest thing, excuse me, <clears throat> the closest thing that I can sort of relate it to would be Milton Keynes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was you liked it. <laughs> yeah, um, but in a good way. Um, how. I don't know if you've ever been to Milton Keynes, Darren, but it's, have, yes. it's built on the grid system. Yeah. Uh, and there's trees everywhere, and everything is really well spread out. Well, that's just how it is here, but in a much nicer way. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not on a grid system. Yeah, it's not here, is it? No. Um, but it is. It's sort of just like that. It's got big, big wide roads, and it, there's trees everywhere. And there's open space everywhere, and all the bit. The buildings are all fairly low as well. Yeah. There's not massive skyscrapers or anything. It is a city here, isn't it? Uh, no, this isn't, actually. Um, Durham isn't a city. It is. Well, Durham itself is a city, but we don't actually live in Durham. We kind of live, you know, outskirts of Durham. Yeah. I mean, you get into Durham or Raleigh, somewhere like that, and then you get the big skyscrapers. Right. But, uh, out here, I mean, we live near the uh, Research Triangle Park. Yeah. Um, and it's a big, you know, industrial business part. They have uh, IBM there, uh, GSK, um, <clears throat> all that kind of thing. But the way they've done it is it's obviously, you know, this whole area is forest. So everything's built into the forest. But they've, they've done a really superb job of keeping the sort of aesthetic of the area alive by making sure that everything they build is tucked back, way back, and then the forest is still left at the front, so you can't really see it. So, with yeah. you, I'm not really familiar with the area that you're in there, but... Do you have like off road and and long private roads that aren't perhaps the same quality of road that we're used to and that sort of thing at all? Or uh, if your question is, do we have shitty roads? God damn, yes, we have. Some yeah. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> no, no, because that that was one of the things that um, struck me when I was out in Missouri. Uh, you really needed a four wheel drive uh, to drive down some of these roads, and even that, it was still a bit of a a scary event driving down some of these roads and I absolutely loved it um, the whole idea of using some of the low gears on the car mm-hmm. um, uh, one of the the GPS system didn't think twice about sending us down one of these um, shitty roads in the uh, the rental car and uh, <laughs> we drove past the uh, the couple of rednecks out on their porch with their guns across their laps <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> You are not from these parts, are you, boy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, in all honesty, around here, I mean, this is quite a developed area, and it's a it's a rapidly growing area as well. Yeah. It's one of the one of the more popular places in the U.S. actually to to come and settle. Uh, so a lot of it around here is quite well developed. But I mean, certainly if you get out in the sticks more, then yes, you definitely get that kind of thing. Um, I mean, a good thing we were pleased about actually is the day Lance arrived. It was a pretty shitty day. It was pissing it down with rain. It was miserable, and we're like. And I, you know, I've been saying to Lance forever that, man, I really wish you'd have come over in the summer um, when it's you know, 98 degrees with 96% humidity. Um, <laughs> yeah, because there's a sadistic bastard that wants to <laughs> suffer. <laughs> um, so we were, you know, I was a bit disappointed. But having said that, he got here, and the next day, bang, it turned back into North Carolina weather. And pretty much the entire time, certainly while we were in the mountains and stuff, we've had 80-degree weather, so it's been beautiful. It's been awesome. It really yeah. has been nice. Saying about... Um, not from round here. The funniest thing that happened when we went to um, Haraz, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Harrah's, the um, Indian casino. The first night we went, we noticed that most of the machines, you have to have a, it's almost like a bonus point card to put in and play on those. And, of course, I don't have one. Bobby has one and you've got one, haven't you? Yes, yeah. um, But I hadn't got one. So sort of, I was limited to the machines that I could play on. And um, Bobby said, well, you know, you can just go and get one. You just hand over your passport and they'll give you one. 
So on the second night, I went over and I went up to the desk and said, uh, hi, you know, I'm from England. Can I have one of these card thingies so I can play on the machine? And um, they couldn't do enough. They just fell over themselves yeah. and kept wanting me to talk to them. Yep. <laughs> and yep. um, they gave me a T-shirt. Here's yep. a gift for you. <laughs> you also it's- find that... You also find that when you go up to the drive throughs and things like that, you, you start talking to them there, and, and um, they're like, where are you from? Um, Durham, just around the corner. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I haven't had it in any of the stores that we've been in yet. Um, probably won't now, because I doubt we'll go shopping much now, will we? I think so. Um, but, yeah, that was certainly quite funny. Yeah, I mean, they, they definitely do around here, and Lance kept commenting on how I like to turn it on. Uh, and I said to him, you spend any time here, and you learn that, turn it on every chance you get because it just pays so much dividend you know people fall over themselves just to hear you talk you know (laughs) if you've been on television more than five times describing what the tornado sounded like you might be a redneck oh that's something around here lance i don't know if you've noticed we've not commented on this actually in uh, well the time you've been here but have you noticed just how many churches there are yeah and they all look identical yeah and they're they're literally you drive 10 feet there's a church another 10 Feet, there's a church, and and uh, they've all got the signs outside. You know, Jesus faves, uh, sa- faves, <laughs> Jesus saves. Hey, yeah. you're my fave. <laughs> God hates fangs. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the thing is, ninety percent of our audience have absolutely no idea what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks to be you, audience. <laughs> <laughs> you'll see, you'll see. It'll be over soon. At least I hope they do. I hope somebody buys it. Yeah, they will. I mean, HBO. I mean, they sell all kinds of stuff to the UK. I'm sure. Channel sell Four, it. I should think. Sci-Fi, yeah. I've got it, I believe. Oh, oh really? I believe so. That's, that's actually quite interesting because I mean, uh, it being on HBO over here. I mean, HBO, as again, I'm sure you'll know, Darren, is uh, kind of a bit of an extreme channel. They they like to be risque and push the the boundaries of what's acceptable. Um, and, of course, you know, we know that True Blood has some pretty hardcore sex scenes in it. Well, uh, about the sex scenes, but the, the, the scene of the um, the vampire last week when um, Suki ended up covered in his blood, I thought that was a little bit... Um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you know, it, I'd be interested to see if Sci-Fi puts it on in its, its full glory or whether they edit the hell out of it. Yeah. I, I suspect they'll put it on in its full glory, but late at night it'll be the thing. I hope so, because it will... Definitely ruin it if it's not mm. all in there. As well. mm. It is a good show. Do you like it? Well, of course, there's been a couple since you've been out there. Have you, have you seen them both, have you? Indeed, I have. Cool. Okay, so we're all caught up. Oh, yeah. The only one I, I shan't see this week's because I shall be, well, I'll be back at your place. Well, yeah. actually, by then I should be back at home. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I hope, anyway. Yeah, he's got the uh, he's got the pleasure of a night flight, and I, I've got to tell you this little story because I told Lance about it the other day, and it, it always strokes me as funny. Um, the first time I ever came over here was the very first time I'd ever flown in an airplane, uh, and it scared the bejesus out of me. I mean, I, I don't deny that. And uh, <clears throat> going back, Bob suggested, "Well, why don't you take some sleeping pills? They'll help you sleep." So I'm like, okay, good idea. So I took a few sleeping pills. Uh, I've got my uh, nicotine patch on my arm to, you know, so I don't have to worry about not smoking for nine hours. And uh, I'm sat in the plane. We're, you know, up, you know, six mile above the Atlantic, flying along. It's dark, and uh, the cabin lights are down, and it's very cozy. And I'm kind of, I'm dozing on and off, and you know, not quite with it. I'm a little high, frankly, because of all the sleeping pills. And uh, I happen to glance out the window. And off in the distance, I noticed this light, and I thought, oh, it must be a star. And then I kept looking at it, and I noticed it was blinking, and and to me it looked like it was coming closer. And I thought, well, that's a bit strange. And, you know, I mean, I've grown up, you know, fascinated with the whole UFO thing and all this kind of thing. So I started thinking, well, no, surely this is ridiculous, you know. This can't be real. So I put my hand up at the window to see if it was like, uh, you know, a light from inside the cabin reflecting and stuff like that. No, it wasn't. And I kept watching it and I kept watching it and I was getting more and more nervous. And I'm thinking, this is really fucking weird. This is the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. And, you know, as I say, I'm I'm pretty much tripping off my head because of these sleeping (laughs) tablets. And uh, eventually reality started to sink in and I realised that that big blinking flashing light was actually the light on the end of the wing. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it was another plane. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's closer than that. <laughs> yeah, it was a light on the end of the wing and there was me convinced it was a UFO and we were all going to get abducted and angry. <laughs> <laughs> what a disappointment yeah, for you. Yeah, I know, that's right. I was looking forward to that. 
So you moving out there then, Lance? No. No? No. Why not? Not unless I can take my daughter with me. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, well, well let me put this to you then. Um, daughter aside, if you didn't have a daughter and you were young, free and single, uh, would you consider it? Would you yeah. like to live in America? Without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Really, why? What, 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 what's, uh, I mean, I know from my point of view, but for you, what's, what's the difference between here and England that, that would make you want to move here? I mean, it's difficult because I'm on holiday, so things are a lot less stress-free anyway, but it does seem a damn sight more relaxed and less, less pressure here than in back at home. Well, it's interesting you say that, actually, Lance. I've spoken to people who come from places like New York and uh, some of the, the biggest cities in the U.S. who've been here, you know, Georgia, Virginia places like that and the one thing they've commented on is how the pace of life here just seems so much slower and less hectic yeah, so it's not just me no so i didn't know whether it was because i'm on holiday and frankly doing fuck all um, you know um the people seem a damn sight more friendlier yep more friendly <laughs> i just see the look in your face then. <laughs> Good uh, you see he's learning to speak redneck already <laughs> more friendlier. um yeah, people do seem a hell of a lot more friendly. Um, they are overall, yes. Uh, I mean, that's something I found here. I mean, that whole thing of Southern hospitality isn't just a, a cliched stereotype used in the movies. I mean, it's very real. Southern hospitality is very real. I mean, Randy and Connie made me feel so welcome. Mm -hmm. The minute I walked yep. in the door, yep. it yep. Just, I just felt really relaxed and, and sort of comfortable. Yeah. There was no sort of airs and graces. If you want a beer, it's in the fridge. Go get it. Yeah. You know. Um, well, I mean, and you know, from my point of view, I don't know whether the the apparent uh, southern hospitality down here is simply because the second I open my mouth, they go all <laughs> weak, need and gushy. Yeah. Um, or if they are always like that. But I mean, you know, uh, everybody I've met has been friendly. I've met very few people I don't like here, other than when they're in a car driving. <laughs> then I don't like anyone because American drivers are idiots. Uh, obviously, the weather's a lot nicer than back home. Yep. Um, yes, I mean, yes. here we are in November, and I've been, every time we've gone out, I've needed sunglasses and a hat, and no coat, and I assume it's still bloody cold and raining and crappy over back in England, is it, Darren? Um, it snowed before you left, didn't it? Only very briefly, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> snow in October. Yeah, um, and I walked up to uh, glorious sunshine when I got off the plane. So uh, yeah, no, I would I would certainly consider moving over here if I didn't have any ties back over in England. Yeah. Oh, Darren, here's something Lance and I discussed the other day. Obviously, Lance and I are pretty much the same age. I know you are. I think you're a little older than both of us, aren't you? How old are you? I'm 37. Yep. Yeah, so you're a little older than both of us. But something Lance and I were talking about the other day is obviously, I mean, we literally, we're within months of each other. So we thought for our 40th birthday, we'd organise a big trip to Vegas. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. But if it's going to be a driving trip, you can come up <laughs> through <laughs> Missouri and we'll join you there and then follow along Route route 44, I think it would be. Um, take us all the way out there. Yeah, it'd be nice. But yeah, yeah no, uh, we, we sort of discussed it when we were in the casino, so obviously it was slightly influenced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I that, thought that'd be a great Have idea. you been out there before, Doug? Uh, no, I haven't, uh, but Bob desperately, desperately wants to get me out there because, I mean, she's been there no end of times for both pleasure and work, um, and she just loves a place. I mean, it's like a mecca for her, so she's so excited about getting me out there. And I, I mean, I love to gamble. I love playing poker, so uh, I, I'd love to get out there. I can't if, wait. If, it was a, if it's something that's possible come the time, um, I would absolutely love to drive out there because it's something like a, a nine-hour drive from uh, where we are. Um, road trip, road trip. Uh, exactly. That, that's one of my dreams. I would love to do something like that. Well, I mean, actually, I mean, I'm kind of planning on driving anyway because of my fear of flying. I, you know, <laughs> but Bob's like, "Well, you drive, and I'll meet you there." <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's going to take a few days. I'd go with Doug. Flying doesn't bother me, but the chance to do a road trip in America is going to be fantastic. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. it'll be just like the movies. Yeah, of course it would. <laughs> uh, it would. It really would. We'll do it the other way around because you could probably get guns. I can get them out. Right? Yeah. So I'm trying to think of any other thing, anything else American that um, we should introduce Lance to before he comes back. Oh, chili dogs. Oh, I had a chili dog. Yeah, I went into rock. 
Uh, that was um, DQ. Oh, Dairy that was Queen. Dairy Queen, yeah, which is of course very American. Dairy Queen's a very American one, yep. Yeah. It had a chili dog there, and um, it hasn't had a Wendy's yet. No, I might have to suggest that for dinner tonight. Actually. Well, I was going to suggest either that or Taco Bell. Yeah. But I've never been to a Taco Bell either. Oh, You've okay. still not been to Taco Bell? Okay, you know that's that's definitely one you got to try. And um, um, oh, good lord! I can't think of the bloody name now. The the Mexican equivalent of uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Darren. Um, uh, I don't know because all the all the Mexicans I've ever been to have always been um, like little mum and pop places. I've never actually been to a. <laughs> There's a lot of grandma's grills around. <laughs> yeah, very popular. Very very popular. Oh, uh, Bojangles, Bojangles. No. <laughs> 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 I've not experienced about Hangley's before. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically like Kentucky Fried Chicken, only it's more spicy. I'm not especially fond of it myself, but my wife loves it. Well, the other the subtle difference is, uh, have you actually been to a KFC? Not yet. With, I can't uh, have that because we've got them. Yeah, but it's different. Yeah, you don't get fries with your KFC. You get um, Down here, certainly in the south, you get... Um, Mashed potato. Yeah, mashed potato, really? and gravy, and biscuits. Yeah, you don't get oh, fries. No. Biscuits. That was the other thing. Mm. Yeah, had biscuits. Biscuits, biscuits nice. and gravy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, Sonic the, is another Bobby, good one. Uh, what was the breakfast Bobby cooked as the first day? It was just ham. Oh, and that was uh, country ham and biscuits and uh, sausage and biscuits, yeah. which is just the best breakfast ever. That was fantastic. I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Bye, <Darren. laughs> Bobby, get hit. We need food. <laughs> oh, we flew your helicopter. Uh, yeah, we did. Well, actually, we, I, he says we flew a, my helicopter. Lance I, tried to fly it a couple of times and then pussied out. <laughs> Are we taking it to the beach? Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely take it to the beach. Because I'll have more space to crash it with. Then. It's, yeah, absolutely. It's the um, Contra Rota thing, the same as your one, isn't it, Lance? No, it's got slightly more controls than mine has. I um, mean, you're right, yes, Darren. I mean, I've actually I've got four helicopters. All right. <laughs> Uh, I have one that's actually Bobby's, it's not mine, and that's a, um, a counter-rotating uh, head, um, but it does have more control than the little one Lance is having, it's a lot bigger. Um, Whereas mine, um, you can pitch forward, pitch back, rotate left, rotate right, and go up and down. This one has banking as well. It has all, all, is it six axes of rotation? Yeah, six it axes. It's Whereas six. mine only has four. Right. So you've got that other two rotations which does make it a whole different beast to try and fly and then uh, then i've got my main one which is my slightly bigger one which is a proper helicopter with uh, just a standard two rotors and the tail rotor but that's that's very difficult to fly it takes a lot of practice to fly that yeah. we do have some video of that as well yeah well, actually i was just going to say darren i don't know if you ever saw the uh, little 10 minute video i put together of um, my helicopter flying i saw I think one of yours, when you're flying it around the, the coffee table indoors, that smaller one, I think that was yours, wasn't it? No, I don't believe so. Mine's quite large. Uh, Mine's in yet. that case, no, I don't think I've seen yours. <laughs> okay, well, in that case, all you need to do, when you get five minutes, go to dieselkiss.com and it'll come up and you'll see the video and you can watch it. It's ten oh. minutes long. Uh, and if you don't want the sound on, turn it off because the background music I put in was She Taught Me How to Yodel by Frank Ifield. <laughs> I have taken quite a bit of video. Excellent, good. So I shall be making into short clips. Yeah, and I tell you what, Darren, I took one shot of Lance. He was uh, when we came down the mountain. The sun had gone down, of course. Um, and what you had, you had this glorious, glorious red and this rich, rich yellow uh, sunset coming up from behind the mountains with these streams of yellow light. It just looked spectacular. So Lance went and stood on the edge of the mountain to take some photos. And Bob and I were sat back at the car waiting for him, and I pulled the video camera out. And what I've got is this wonderful, wonderful shot. It looks great. It's You've basically got Lance in his cowboy hat in complete silhouette with this sunset behind him. Excellent. It just yeah. looks fantastic. So I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i get that you know, chopped onto, uh, onto my PC and I'll send Lance the clip so that he can do whatever he wants with it. So yeah. I'm actually going to try and pull a still shot off from it as well. To uh, Well, that, that's the other thing. Uh, uh, Lance, if you've been taking video all the time, make sure you get some pictures of you there. Because well, otherwise have, you come back with a whole bunch of stuff that you could have just downloaded off of YouTube anyway. Yeah. No, Doug's been using the camera as well Excellent. for me. That's some good. Of, some of it. And likewise with the camera, 
I've got photos. I've got a crap load of photos from the yeah. mountains. Took loads. And there is quite a few of me as well. So Yeah, um, like, I mean, when we went to the Mile High Bridge, I, I took Lance's video cam and let him sort of head off over the bridge and then follow till you got video of him going across the bridge and yeah, stuff. That's, that's so. good. Do you have a video camera, Doug? Yes, I do, yes. Oh, of course, because that's how you got the one of the... the silhouette. The silhouette. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, the camera I'm using, actually, is my father's because I couldn't find the charger for mine, and mine's oh. a bit... You know how rope mine is with it starts. Yeah, it starts uh, chewing tapes up and stuff. Yeah, Venetian blind type lines down it. Yeah, it's really odd. Yeah, yeah. So quite fortunately, I brought Dad's instead. You can actually—I don't know if you know Lance, but uh, if you look, I, I can give you a link to a site, and it does uh, uh, components for consumer electronics. Uh, yeah. And what you want to do is replace the whole. Um, uh, tape mechanism is uh, that what it is yeah and basically what it would do is you pull it it's not as easy as i'm making it sound but you pull <laughs> it all apart you take the whole tape mechanism out as one unit and plug a new one in oh, right. uh, the only thing is i mean i'm not sure how old your camera is how much you paid for it and whether or not it would be worth the cost of doing it well i was thinking basically i might just get a new one yeah cause yes. better. i mean i bought mine bloody hell i was still living in sharpwell uh, i just sold the house to sharpwell because that's yeah. how i bought it you know in that case then it's definitely not worth it because I, mean, I doubt you'll even be able to get hold of the, the parts tape mechanism. It. I mean, it was. I mean, Nowadays, you get solid state ones that are either got a hard drive in them or even a flipping eight gigabyte um, yeah. memory card, and it's a no, lot it's less to go along. Oh, it's about five, six years old. Mm. So it probably be worth it. Oh, that was the thing. That guy at Klingman's Dome, he just made me laugh, Darren. How's this been nerdy? <laughs> There's a group of them up there, and they're discussing what cameras they've got and what they're using. And his comment was. I've got an eight gigabyte card in this puppy. <laughs> <laughs> I just like I just stood there and thought, you twat. <laughs> there was something on Top Gear where they were listing out all of the information about this MP3 player that was part of the car. Now, rather than quoting the size of the engine and and its stopping capacity and its naught to sixty bit, they were saying about how it was um, a twenty four bit encoded. Um, eight gigabyte USB compatible um, seat multi CD head, and Jeremy Clarkson had got no idea what any of this meant that he was rattling <laughs> off. And I'm listening to it thinking that's no better than the average iPod. What? The, so why would they post about these figures? Do you know what, Darren? It's interesting you say that, but we have a lot of adverts, particularly for cars like um, Lexus and stuff like that over here. And I often comment to Bobby, it makes me laugh because the whole advert is based around the GPS system and the stereo system in the yeah. car. Yeah. They don't mention hardly anything about the car, and it's like you don't buy a car for the fucking GPS and the stereo system. You buy a car to find out if it'll do naught to 60 faster than your buddy and if it will go around a corner sideways without throwing you through the windscreen, you know? Not uh, in these so ecological times, you don't. Now you've got to be much more considerate of the environment and. Screw that. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was looking at my brother in law's truck the other day, and it's, uh, it's a Dodge Ram 1500. Oh, um, nice. And, yeah, it is. It's lovely. And it's it's got a 5.7 litre V8, and I'm thinking, yes, thank you. I'll have one of those. <laughs> global warming? What global warming? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't hear you whine about the global warming above the noise of my 5.7 litre V8. <laughs> yeah, my father-in-law's got a Dodge Ram um, 1300, I think it is, and it's got the twin um, tyres on the back axle. Uh, oh, yeah. Six litre engine, but it's diesel, and he uses it for towing... How redneck is this? He uses it for towing his tractors. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, there, there's such a wonderful comparison there, because as you pull down the driveway to my uh, brother-in-law's place, you pass by his parked tractor and his two Dodge Ram trucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I love it. The first time that I went out to meet Barbara's family, uh, we met up at a tractor fair um, where they had the whole thing with pulling the tractor with the... Um, the the weight that gradually goes further down the the tractor and digs it into the ground and <laughs> the, it was fantastic L miles upon miles of all these restored tractors from the the thirties and the forties and um, they they're probably as enthusiastic about their their petrol engines as we used to be about our steam engines yeah. so I, I, I don't know if in your youth you were ever dragged around these steam fairs the same way as I used to be but um, that that's what that was why yeah. 
the fears they had out in the states. It's kind of funny, actually, Darren. Being you know, being English and all the rest of it, I kind of thought I'd be a bit snobby when it came to rednecks out here. But I have to say, I absolutely adore rednecks. I've absolutely. never met people who are more comfortable with who they are yep. and who just know how to do nothing but have a good time. You know, yep. and I just love rednecks. I love their whole outlook on life. I love their honesty. You know, it's just fantastic. Yeah. Well, considering they started off saying they had nothing to say, Lance and Doug pretty much stole the show this week. Well, thank you very much for listening, and we will be back again on Thursday next week. Maybe a live show, maybe not. Who knows? You'll have to listen to find out. You can call the Dumb Down Live crew on 07-092-274-759. You can follow us on Twitter. Our account name is Dumb Down Life. The email address is ddlpodshow at gmail.com. The website address is www.dumbdownlife.com. And remember, if there are more than five McDonald's bags in your car, you might be a redneck.